Wonder Grubs is a company whose goal is to tackle food insecurity and create equity in the Atlanta area with their unique solution. Through meeting Akisi Stokes, co-founder of Wonder Grubs, and her team, we were introduced to mealworms, the insect that seems to hold the solution to several of our community's problems. However, the inability to obtain healthy foods is not the only problem that these mealworms can mitigate. Mealworm excretions, known as frass, hold potential to become an environmentally friendly fertilizer, one that is less destructive than cow and mineral fertilizers. As mealworms move through their life cycle, they molt and excrete frass. Frass contains nutrients known as NPK, or nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. N, P, and K are necessary to the growth of plants. Because of this, I believe that frass is able to tackle the problems with commercial fertilizers. First, let's look at why regular fertilizers fall short. The typical fertilizers we use in our daily lives already work well, however they heavily consume non-renewable resources while causing air and water pollution. Additionally, the process of farming cattle creates high amounts of greenhouse gases and has high global warming potential. Because of this, some environmentalists turn to insects like the mealworm for a greener alternative. According to a report by David Hoban and others, when compared to a control group, the ryegrass grown in mealworm frass had remarkably higher biomass thus showing the fertilizer potential of frass. This data was mentioned to be independent of the rate of application of frass, as research is still being conducted to find the ideal rate of application for plant growth. This affinity for use as a fertilizer comes from the frass's NPK values. These chemicals, along with other soil nutrients, are vital for plant growth. According to a different study by David Hoban and others, the frass has NPK contents as efficient as mineral NPK fertilizers and similar to that of poultry manure. It also contains other chemicals such as zinc and copper, which increases microbial activity. Moreover, frass has been found to administer these nutrients consistently, whereas typical fertilizers may have a less consistent distribution of nutrients. Here's a closer look at phosphorus and potassium. While some typical fertilizers may fall short in terms of even distribution of nutrients, it has been found that frass does not. Therefore, when troubleshooting issues in the garden, frass may become the go-to solution. When it comes to nitrogen, however, this is where things become a little bit unsure. Akisi Stokes mentioned that frass can have high concentrations of nitrogen, hindering plant growth, whereas a typical manure can serve as a fertilizer on its own. Additionally, Hoban declares that the effects of the nitrogen contents of frass are still somewhat of a mystery. Despite this, the study goes on to report that nitrogen is considered to be an important factor in the growth of plants. The high nitrogen content of frass was found to increase nitrogen uptake in plants. Therefore, frass was considered to supply nitrogen in a similar manner to typical fertilizers. As mentioned before, the addition of frass was found to greatly increase plant mass, regardless of the frequency of application. Now that we know that frass is a viable alternative or supplement to typical fertilizers, why should we consider using it when regular manure or mineral fertilizers work fine? The answer is the environmental impact that typical fertilizers have. According to a report by Dennis Unings, livestock cultivation uses the large majority of agricultural land and is responsible for 15% of greenhouse gas emissions as a result of humans. On top of this, current food production and feed practices tend to cause deforestation, as well as deplete the stocks of fish. But we want to focus on cattle, as they are where we get our manure. According to Unings, in a comparison of carbon dioxide emissions and equivalent, Cow livestock production produced over 11 times more emissions than mealworms. In terms of land use, cattle production used almost 13 times as much land. These values seem to make mealworm production with the intention of using their frass as fertilizer appealing. However, their one downside is energy use. In order to produce one kilogram of protein, mealworms use an amount of energy similar to, but slightly larger than chicken. To sum this all up, Mealworm production is far more eco-friendly than other farm animal practices that yield as agricultural manure in the sense that it uses far less land and produces a tiny fraction of the greenhouse emissions. However, the energy use is on the high end. In short, in communities where land for cattle production is scarce, mealworms can substitute as a more environmentally ethical source of protein and fertilizer. What I take away from all this research is that mealworm frass, while having its downsides, still appears to have many benefits. Despite its unpredictable nitrogen contents and its high energy consumption, it still trumps typical fertilizers in that its production requires little land and resources, as well as it hardly produces any greenhouse gases. As research is still limited on this new idea, I believe there is potential in frass. I can't say that it is fit to be a full replacement for fertilizer, however it certainly has displayed benefits when tested in growth of real plants. 
Anyone with a green thumb may look at the pollution and resource consumption of their fertilizer and seek a better alternative. Therefore, I believe FRAS has a fair potential to become an environmentally friendlier supplement to the existing fertilizers when compared to ongoing manure practices.